Well, um, good evening, good night, good morning to wherever you are right now. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, webinar uh, of the International Association for Volunteer Effort. The topic of this webinar is a close look to digital volunteering. We're very happy to be sharing uh, this series of webinars um, done by the uh, Global Youth Volunteers uh, Strategy of IAVE. Global Youth Volunteers is the youth uh, arm of the organization. And we're trying to um, understand a little bit of the topics that are concerning youth right now, and also a sharing initiative that youth are doing all over the world. Um, as, as you probably know, um, the, the different and growing change, changes in technology is something that are something that um, youth can count on now more than ever. And that's why we think online volunteering or digital volunteering is um is a topic that that we we need to not only discuss but first and foremost understand um my name is Raida Mana I am the project manager of Global Youth Volunteers working with with IAVE and today we have two very 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 good presenters but more than that um each of them with with knowledge around this area that comes from from research and from action uh, our first presenter is monica galiano monica is also part of the staff of ayave and she has developed um a research around digital volunteering monica has been working for close to 10 20 years in brazil and latin america as a senior consultant in corporate volunteering, helping companies with the creation and management of their volunteering programs. She's the co-author co co of the first performance indicators to evaluate such programs. And she conducted several studies and published several books around, around the subject of corporate volunteering. She's currently a senior researcher for IAVE responsible for the corporate strategy in Latin America. And one of the most uh, recent researches that Monica has done is around uh, digital volunteering. So Monica, thank you for being here with, with us tonight. And uh, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Raida. It's a pleasure to be addressing such uh, a good group of youth, youth, young people, and uh, congratulations for the initiative. Well, my name is Monica. I'm. Please tell me if you can show, can see my screen. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I was invited by by Telefonica Vivo Foundation in Brazil to make a study on digital volunteering which resulted in these publications up to now only in Portuguese. So you have here at the footer the link for it, but it is not in English yet. Perhaps they are going to translate it in Spanish. Okay, so um, we are going today to talk a little about digital volunteering. Perhaps can we stay hyperconnected solidarity? We don't know. In fact, we live in a very peculiar moment of human reality among deep transformations in all social cultural spheres due to technological and scientific advancement. The possibility we have that continuously alternating between work, social life, leisure is the main characteristic of our connected lives. We search technological connectivity according to our age, gender, ethnic group, culture, etc. But how does it modify us and our values and attitudes? Is, a matter, is it a matter of liking or taking action? And how does this connectivity, hyperconnectivity, affect us? No doubt we are more wired 
we are quicker, more productive, better informed, yes. But are we more cautious with the environment, more competitive or more generous? Are we more selfish, more isolated, happier? Do we better express our solidarity? Are we better volunteers? These are the things where around the, the, we are going to have this conversation tonight. I invite you to read in silence this phrase with me, please. And this is another one. When it appears. Yes, here it is. These were words of John Perry Barlow in a good, uh, an interesting book, Crime and Confusion, in 1990. 1990. Uh, yes, we are in the cyberspace. Yes, we are living a connected life, living in networks. When we talk about technology, we can say that we are the cyborgs. And uh, another very important question, the most contemporary question is mobility. And then where is solidarity and digital volunteer among this new way of being in the world? In fact, these are the four chapters of the book I presented to you at the very, at the very beginning. This is, these are the words, the four topics which mold our reality nowadays. Well, this study was a very inspiring journey and we mapped lots and lots of initiatives and we selected 100 of initiatives of using the internet, the technology of connectiveness to make volunteer work. 100 initiatives are published in the book, but there are, you can find in the internet, lots and lots and lots more. And all this work provoked us a lot of questions, basically. We are connected all the time and in all places, 24 hours, seven days a week. Does this change our way of being volunteers? We have easy access to everything occurring in the world. Does it make us more generous? Can a click or a million of clicks change the world? I think all of us know this or have seen once in a life this pyramid of the basic human needs. You remember them from physiological needs, survival, to creativity, problem solving, authenticity, spontaneity. I will dare to add Wi-Fi. It's so basic for us today that uh, it, we, we live in time, and this is no longer a hypothesis. Um, even if everybody says that humans seem to be increasingly isolated because we spend lots of hours in the computer, in fact, the new, as we all know, the new media facilitator will facilitate our interrelationship with others. Uh, the French uh, sociologist Michael Maffesoli, I like him very much, uh, says if modernity, particularly in, this in his final moment, saw the triumph of the lonely crowd, it was uh, the, the words that he used to define the lonely crowd of modernity, the emerging post-modernity will develop a variety of new urban tribes whose essence is relationism, which is a neologism created in the 50s. But this Michel Maffesoli is the um, creator of this urban tribes expression. It can be a paradox. Even based on individuality, there is a strong sense of relationship or hyper-relationship because we only exist in relation if we are in the network, isn't it? So, these are some of the realities in, we live in today. And we ask ourselves, in which sense the cyberspace extends and complements the physical world? It's impossible to escape from this communion between the omnipresent connection and the totally mediated interactivity. Each day we are more us with ourselves. 
each day more connected and interactive. The network works aggregating, associating, and creatively contaminating. Thus, the crescent anxiety of the young people, and the not so young too, I confess, when the phone does not work, or when we do not have internet connection, isn't it? Because being of life or offline is as if we do not exist. It's, isn't that incredible or terrible? I don't know. Technologies we use to find, store, and share information can literally redirect our neural paths, the, the scientist uh, says. Um, here is a, an interesting uh, thought. The printed book served to concentrate our attention, promoting deep and creative thoughts. Inversely, internet favors a quick and distracted sample of little pieces of information from multiple forms. We are, everyone is with everybody. This is one of the great mantras of our times. Everyone with everybody. And these are the words which matters most for us, for us perhaps. So, What's volunteering today? We need to, to change the framework, the mindset to, to think about volunteering because things are changing. So is it in person or online? Is there this division really? In fact, volunteering today is in person plus the internet plus the mobility. That's the way we need to look at this phenomenon. And then there is the Internet of Things coming. It is in, within us. We will connect, uh, uh, we'll connect our objects, our house appliances, robots, so the things will begin to talk with each other and perform actions without ourselves. That's a little scary even. I, I brought to you these uh, four categories I learned uh, last week. A very interesting Internet of Things, a network of physical objects. The Internet of Everything is devices, people, processes, and that. And then there is the Internet of Me, which is the connected me. And then all of us immersed in an environment of connected life. These are the last uh, ideas. When we talk about this technology, in fact, when I saw uh, I saw a lot of things. I, I can't tell that we are the cyborgs. We see more than our eyes see. We use dresses that shimmering with shimmering lights uh, who moves, which moves uh, with the music, or exhale smoke when you don't want uh, to be with the pe the person who is coming to you. This, isn't that uh, incredible? And then, after the wearables, the embedded, there is a camera in this eye. And this is not anymore science fiction. Lots of health problems have been, are being solved by these or implanted chips, perhaps uh, used for medical remote control and diagnosis. So, having said all of this, what is solidarity and digital volunteering? Where is the solidarity nowadays? Perhaps these words, let's see something here. These are the words that um, a group of people told us when we asked um, to tell the first two words they, they came to their mind when they hear or read the, the expression digital volunteering. So you see there are a lot of, of concepts. And this is the other mantra of our time, click. Because in our digital world, click on impulse is to be supported. And the click is the modern way to, the modern way to say quicker and, and, and easily. I agree, I want to help, I support, I can help. But that click gives us a false or a fake sense of immediate proximity. I, I would like to have a word of attention here. The digital age has the effect of belittling the world. In fact, technology makes little, approximate, put everything closer. 
it, it abolishes territorial boundaries and also day and night. In internet, we do not say good morning or good night. We say hello, exactly like in this moment where people are in the middle of the day, other and at night, etc. So, is virtual volunteering real? I put this phrase here because virtual and real has exactly an opposite um, meaning. When you know what uh, virtual volunteering is not a new concept, it has been practiced for over 30 years, yes, probably from the, the, where um, the internet was born. The first action of organized virtual volunteer ever had it was Project Gutenberg. It was a volunteer effort that began in 71 to digitize, archive, and distribute cultural and literal works published in paper. And then in 95, uh, Impact Online, a nonprofit from Palo Alto, California, had begun to promote the idea of virtual volunteering. They, they were the first to investigate the scope of, of virtual volunteering and promote their practice in NGOs in the United States. But then, because of this opposition between virtual and real, the, the name virtual um, was not used anymore. So we have a lot of other things today, volunteer mediated by the internet at distance, online volunteering, digital volunteering. We talked about cyber activists, activists, hacktivists, micro volunteers, cyber volunteer. All of we, all of you have seen these words. And well, in fact, online at distance, e-volunteering, volunteer mediated by internet, this is all the same thing. These names refers to the same kind of technology used to do the actions. Cyber volunteers is a name given especially in Spain to volunteers who try to diminish the digital divide, uh, teaching people to use the, no the new technologies. So they are empowering others to be able to act in it, the internet. Micro-volunteers are those who do little and quick actions at home, in pajamas, yes, or even at lunch, at lunch hour in the companies. So this is related to the short duration of, an, of the action and it's not exclusively online. Cyber activists or clicktivists are the social activists who advocate for a cause and use social media to convene, mobilize, disseminate, ask for support, get signatures, etc. But now, hacktivism, I would like to, to, to share with you some of what I have learned, is the subversive use of computers and computer networks to promote a political agenda. With roots in the hacker culture and the hacker ethics, its ends are often related to the free speech, <clears throat> human rights, or freedom of information. Depending on who is using the term, hacktivism can be a politically motivated technology hack or a constructive form of anarchic civil disobedience, or an undefined uh, anti-systemic uh, gesture. You know, it can signal anti-capitalist or political, pro political protest or um, open source advocates. Hack hacktivism is the uses of entering other compute others computer systems to make some political. Um, gesture, really. Generally, you know what? Generally, social activists don't like the word volunteering. They don't consider themselves as volunteers. This is a topic which needs uh, which needs further discussion, of course. But I put this all under the word of the the, the umbrella of digital volunteering. Uh, the cyber volunteers can paraphrase the well-known slogan of sustainable development, act locally, think globally, applying to the social function, and say, share locally, connect globally. So these are some of the examples. I would like, I brought to you five examples, and I strongly recommend you enter in the online volunteering.org from the United Nations Volunteers because this is the most comprehensive site and program on, of volunteering online and we have 
hundreds of very inspiring uh, examples. For instance, this is a group I will not read because you have access to this material uh, and to the site. This is a, an action in African countries made by 48 volunteers, volunteers, online volunteers. Uh, these are a, a few volunteers giving some classes to children with visual or hearing disabilities online. This is only one volunteer, one online volunteer, Leonardo, uh, from Colombia, and he made a very interesting thing to help the organization with his design abilities. This is another two, these um, are four volunteers, four online volunteers in Kyrgyzstan. They developed the project proposal of technologies, low carbon technologies. Here, a group of several volunteers make a monthly e-zine. Here we have a, uh, the last example, 37 volunteers volunteers made in a research helping the United Nations for a rich uh, research. So I am very pleased that tonight we have uh, a colleague of us, uh, Jorge, which is one of these online volunteers that could uh, uh, share with us um, his experience. So Raida, this is what I have to present and I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Monica, for, for this good presentation. Um, I think we, we are starting to, to understand with, this, with these concepts many, many different discussions that we need to have when we talk about digital volunteering um, exactly. and how it is connected to actually our everyday life. Um, yes. If you, if you let me, I would like to, to say a last thing. I think that my, my final remarks could be that co-creation, collaboration, network action are at the order of the day. Because the world seem, seems less fragmented, less distant. More actions are possible. Different possibilities are created every, 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 every day. And original ways of working for a cause are invented at all the time. So making a, an impact at distance is possible. Let's embrace these new possibilities. Thank Definitely. You, Raida. Definitely. And I think, Monica, um, a good example of how to use these new resources um, for different causes is a little bit of what we're going to hear from our next presenter. And I'm really uh, happy to introduce him, his name is uh, Jorge or Jorge Enrique. Uh, Jorge is a, an entrepreneur uh, and he uses the methodologies of lean startup and design thinking uh, in his work. He's also a huge fan of human computer interaction. And in 2015, he was selected as one of the 200 most influential young entrepreneurs by Telefonica Foundation. He works with in four people. Uh, in four people conven converts raw data about social programs into interesting stories that engage the users to support um, a specific cause. Uh, in four people seek to make social actions easier and more tangible for, for a user. And they believe that information is the key to actually empower and stimulate people to take action. So with that said, I'm gonna give the microphone to George, to Jorge, but I'm gonna make him the presenter first so that he can share his uh, presentation with us. So Jorge, if, if you're here, um, I think you're on now, we're seeing your presentation right now. Sorry, I can't listen to you anymore. I hope you're listening to me. Yes, we're 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 listening to you. Uh, I think we are already sharing the screen. I'm not sure you're listening to me. We yes, we are. 
We are, and one thing that I have to mention before you go on is that both of our presenters are in Brazil. Jorge is in the in in Florianópolis, and Monica mm -hmm. she's actually Argentinian, but she is joining us from Sao Paulo today. So thank you, thank you both for for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Um, are you listening to me now? Yes. Oh, that's great. So first of all, I'd like to thank you, Ayave, and you, Rita, for having me. And you can call me George, Jorge. Uh, here in Brazil, we say Jorge, but uh, I really like all, all the ways, so. Okay, perfect. You can choose it. <laughs> uh, so Rita already explained really well uh, about it for people. You almost maybe made my presence here useless. <laughs> But I'll try to make it funny anyway. So uh, I'm I'm one of the co-founder of Infer People, and l let me share the presentation. I hope you're you're seeing my screen right now. And so I started with the this picture because I think it it's it's good to see who we're talking to, and this is uh, a picture of our team. Uh, in this picture, we, we had just received a, a really nice prize last year. Uh, we got selected uh, as one of the three most important startups, uh, social startups in Brazil. And one, one thing I, I, I think it's really interesting to say, to share with you is uh, we are a, a complementary team, a, a really different team. I'm a business major, Tiago is a designer and Fabiano is uh, a developer, so it really helps us to build anything we believe and to build it in the way we believe. So let's start. Uh, our mission is to democratize information about social causes. So why is that? Um, we, we have heard and we have probably looked for a lot of information online like open data, uh, information from NGOs and uh, research from universities. And sometimes we find something, but it is in a, a way, it, it's not easy to analyze this data. You can convert this data into information and not to say when it's hidden or buried from the public. They say it's open data, but it's not actually really open. So what we want to do is to make it easy for anyone and everyone to access information about social causes for free. Uh, and we do it because there are a few people volunteering and donating, at least here in Brazil. And it makes it everything even harder for, for NGOs. So what we do is uh, we analyze the data. I just, told, I just told you like this open data or research from universities and we tell the story behind this data. So we believe people don't like data in its raw form, like tables and Excel stuff, but stories are really interesting. So we try to tell the story behind the data. And in this way, we want to make it more interesting and more engaging for people to know more about a social cause. And then we build apps. Uh, we build apps with these stories, with this information. And the main goal with these apps is to engage the people uh, about some social cause. And this example here is about adoption Brazil. And we will uh, navigate in our app later. But it, it just to give you a sense of what we do. So. We, we build these apps and it's free for anyone to use it online in our website. And people can get engaged in the calls, but they also can even help. Uh, and this is the digital volunteering part of our project. Uh, they can really help from their computers and this is really cool. So this is what Infra People does and I'd like to share uh, this app with you. So let's see if it works. Uh, I hope you're still uh, seeing my screen. 
So this is the first app we built. Uh, it's called Adoption in Brazil, and of course it uh, tells a little bit more about uh, the adoption in Brazil. So we got this data, um, open data from the government, a lot of uh, PDF documents, uh, a lot of tables with a lot of numbers, and we converted it into something we, we thought it would be more uh, more pleasant, uh, I could say, for people to analyze. It's easier to analyze, it's better to analyze in this way. So when we started building it, we, we got some really cool insights, like uh, in Brazil we have officially registered more than 5,000 uh, children to be adopted. But we have almost 30,000 uh, people wanting to adopt these children. It means we have five times more people wanting to adopt than children waiting to be adopted. And these kind of uh, insights really got us. And so uh, besides this information, we also built a step-by-step -step how to adopt here in Brazil. So you can find... Uh, what we what you have to do to adopt a, a child here in Brazil and we also built some information about why we have these this kind of numbers uh, just like I, I showed to you we have five times more people wanting to adopt why is that and one of our main dis uh, discoveries one of our main insights is because uh, this light green line here, this is the age of the applicants or the people who want to adopt, they are looking for. So they want children up to six or seven years old. But the children are already, most of them are already over seven or uh, over eight years old. So this is the kind of analysis, the kind of insights we want to uh, give to people. And we had this application online for over a year and we got a lot of feedbacks because people got engaged in this, uh, in this cause about adoption in Brazil, but they couldn't do anything. So what can they do? I mean, uh, they can learn a little bit more about adoption, but they couldn't really do anything. And this is why we built our. This is why we built our second app. And I'm opening it right now. Uh, I'm sorry, it's in, in Portuguese only for now. But I'll be able to show you uh, this action part, which is really interesting because uh, just like the other app, we tell the story using data. But then we have this action area here, and people can really uh, help the children uh, from the app. Like we have this Godfather program where people can donate uh, money monthly to a child, or they could even find a shelter um, with uh, children uh, close to their states and their city. And and get in contact with them. So uh, this is really cool because now people can really do something from the app. Um, they can even share the information in their Facebook or Twitter accounts or they can uh, go to the other app and learn more about adoption in Brazil. So I think this is the the main idea of uh, Info People, uh, we, we try to give this easy way of acting from their computers uh, for anyone who are interested in the causes we, we work with. Um, I hope uh, it's, uh, you, you like this example of digital volunteering and I'm here to answer any question you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, Jorge, thank you very much. That was that was really interesting. I think as we discussed earlier, um, it's just very interesting to see how one very same company worked in two products that show the different stages of 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 the different things we can do online. 
in the first uh, app that we saw, we saw um, something much more based on information and the information that we can obtain. While in the second, we actually went to went to the the part when where a person can take action, and I mm -hmm. think that also uh, is very connected to the explanation that Monica was giving us, and it's very connected to the to the different things that we can do when we access online platforms, and uh, the work that Infor Infor people is doing is a good example of actually using technology tools uh, to serve purposes of different causes. In this case, in particular, with the example that, that we saw uh, with adoption, for example, in Brazil and with childhood care in Brazil. Um, so thank you. Thank you, George, very much for sharing these, um, these examples and for sharing a little bit with us about the work that you, that you guys are doing. Um, mm -hmm. I am. I want to to open the the microphone for you. Um, as you know, we can um, we can uh, hear from you both uh, typing and also uh, and also via microphone. Um, so. I want to invite you, if you have any questions right now, if you're going to write it, please give us your name and where are you from. And um, if you want to to share any, any question or any experience right now, please let us know. This is the moment for, for us to, to share a little bit, to ask our speakers some questions and to generate a healthy discussion around these subjects. So anybody? Anybody that has a question? Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to to start with one and then we'll give time for those who are typing their questions. But um I I would like to start with a question um for Monica Monica I know that um you you took a good part of last year doing this investigation um and I I I would like to I would like to to ask you in doing the research what for you was something that um that you were not familiar with in in, in any way that you think is going to be very important to understand for the next couple of years of how volunteering can use uh, digital tools. One of the things that you mentioned is mobile technology. Maybe if you can elaborate a little bit on that or any other subject that you think out of your research is very important in the, in the trend of digital volunteer for the next couple of years, what would you say that is? Okay. Uh, in fact, mobility is the absolutely divider of things because now people can volunteer or make micro-volunteer movements or uh, sign a petition wherever they are in the world. If they are uh, waiting the bus, they can sign yes for a cause, and that's uh, uh, that's an action, you know, and. Um, I think that the most important thing, it's not operational, but it's conceptual, mm -hmm. because uh, we are not used to think that clicking, it's a volunteer act. I mean, traditional volunteers, volunteers say, oh no, volunteer work is to go there to to bring your your time and body and compassion and affection and make a liaison with the person and uh, that's that's what volunteers have been doing uh, for centuries that's vol real volunteer work and you have the other people who who and, and they and they they say so uh, clicking 
it's not volunteer work. It can be a civic thing or whatever, but it's not it's not volunteer work. That was the most important thing that arose. Discussions around the concept. And then there are the the others who say, well, but things has changed. The ways of people uh, represent and, and, and share their opinions have changed. So if you need X number of signatures to make a law passed by the, the, the government, you can do that with only a click and you gather one million signatures and the law is passed in the, yeah. in the legislative. So that's important too. So I think that the great discussion is not what we can do, but why are we going to do that? And what does it really mean for the volunteer field? I think we need, in fact, to change our mindset. This is one thing. And the other is a discussion about social activism and volunteering. Mm -hmm. We need a new and fresh way to see to these uh, two things and, and try to merge the boundaries because they are, they are going to the same point, I think. Thank you. But as a, as a matter of fact, as the most impressive things I've, I've seen is the, the extraordinary um, effect in, in countries who have not um, land telephone lines and they received the, the mobility technology and their lives changed because some volunteers decided to share data, how, as well as Georgie had, had showed us, to share data. To, we have a very interesting organization named Ushahidi in, in, in Africa, uh, where they created an app when people see something that is wrong or a disaster or a, um, whatever is hurting somebody, the person can click in the phone and in real time this uh, this appears in the maps of all the organization and they can mobilize people to help. That's, That's right. extraordinary. And this is a volunteer action, even if it is not a volunteer work, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, definitely, and I think, Monica, that, that is it's also very interesting to understand the impact um, of this kind of this kind of tools, like the ones that, that George men mentioned, and the ones that you are mentioning. For example, with with what's happening right now in in Nepal, and something what exactly. like, what Facebook developed uh, this this uh, possibility for people in Nepal to actually mark if they're safe or not, and And, and out of that, all of the great possibilities that can emerge from using a technology in a good way. Um, so definitely this gives us more things to think about. And, and it gives us also more things to think about when we think, when, when we start thinking about uh, what, is, what does actually mean something technological. Because uh, the, use of, the, the very use of cell phones itself and text messaging It's already a, a tool, a digital tool. So it is, it is very important, and it is definitely a discussion that that we need to to have deeper. Yeah. Um, I have here another question from Renee from Washington D.C. Um, it says, "I manage programs that dispatches volunteers globally. We are beginning to do virtual programs." and would like to know how to measure impact for the receiving organization of the virtual volunteers. And is there a sweet spot of number of hours a virtual volunteer can contribute to have impact? So he's asking basically about how to measure the impact of virtual volunteers. And if there's a... Um, um, Uh, let's say a standard or sweet spot for the number of hours that a virtual volunteer needs to contribute to, our, to an organization. 
uh, right if you if you let me renan no there is no measuring this is a very very new field there are there are no studies on this i think that uh, i have uh, telefonica foundation and my research are one of the first uh, looks to this so in fact there is no measuring and there is not also um, comparisons or or theory about uh, how many hours i think that about the hours you can count on the same kind of hours that a volunteer that, that it's reasonable that a volunteer uses for your, your organization and in each country it is different here in brazil we t we we tend to accept that four hours to eight hours a week it's good enough but uh, that's absolutely subjective, you know, it depends on a lot of things. But here it is because of uh, labor laws. And um, about uh, measuring, I think there is not difference in the indicators or the measures are the process to establish them. The difference is the characteristic of the action. But so, if before we counted how many people how many volunteers went to the shelter to give soup to the people perhaps now we can eventually count how many donations for a, a, a soup uh, plate we a volunteer got with a campaign in his facebook you know so um, it's, it's only a question of ad adapting the measures to the means, to the ways you are doing the things. But, well, I am exactly a kind of a specialist in evaluation too, so I love the discussion. But to measure something, you need to know which were the results you wanted prior. Once you have that, if the volunteer work is on life, I mean, uh, presential with the, the, the body and soul, or if it is um, at distance, you can measure the same the same way. But uh, no, there are. I, I I found nothing. Nobody doing this yet. Great, thank you, Monica. And and I would like to I would like to to pass that. Um, that question quickly to Jorge. Jorge was having a little bit of tech issues, but I think he's back now. And and Jorge, before I have one one question for you, but I would like to ask: uh, When you develop your apps for different causes, um, how do you do the measuring of the impact of the actions that that you guys are promoting? Uh, is it um, is it a standard by any any type of uh, indicators? or it depends on the action, or how is the process to develop that uh, that way to measure the impact? Well, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, actually, when we started, uh, we, we didn't have a way to measure the impact we generated. So after over a year, we had this uh, adoption app online. We received so many feedbacks about uh, people wanting to have that we created this second app. So in this second app, we have actions people can take from their, their computers and these actions we can measure. So it totally depends on the cause and on the actions we, we provide. And in order to provide these actions, we build partnerships with other NGOs and with other organizations. Um, but uh, there's there's not a, a standard way because it totally depends on the cause and on the actions. Okay. And it, it's uh, really a, a new thing for us. Uh, it started uh, it started like two months ago. We we launched our new app with the the action area. So it's still a new thing for us as well. But uh, we feel like it's like. It's the difference we can really make. Now, now we can really make a difference because um, we are not only giving information to people, we are also giving them a way to 
act on this information. Definitely. And, and you know, um, for, for all of us who work in the social field, particularly with youth, we now understand more, more than ever how important it is to actually have a way to measure the impact. But at the same time, the impact mm -hmm. of social actions can be measured in so many different ways and can also be put together in so many creative new ways that we need to actually be very open-minded to, to new ways of presenting this type of information, information, which is very connected to what Monica was saying about um, integrating different uh, type, of, type of tools. Um, I, have, mm -hmm. I have one, one question here for, um, for Jorge, and it's, it's about um, putting together, it's, it's, it's very connected to what we were talking about, and it's about putting together a company that, um, that is growing around the, the, the concept of a social impact. Um, Carlos from Colombia is asking about the struggles, the biggest struggles of the companies, of the company in the, uh, so far. And what are the, mm -hmm. the next plans for, for the next couple of years? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you very much. And I think uh, here in Brazil, uh, the main problem we have here um, is this, this culture about, like, it's kind of wrong to, uh, to earn money um, with social impact. Uh, it's kind of wrong to help people and like get uh, get money by, by helping people. So this is a uh, this is really a problem we have here because uh, it's kind of uh, a barrier, uh, an obstacle we, we have. Uh, we have people to to believe uh, that it's it's actually good to to create a a company or actually we are uh, a NGO but uh, to create a company that can help people and uh, and make money at the same time it's it's not bad it's actually good so uh, I think this is the this is the main problem uh, we have and we are always working on on different ways to to help to change this kind of uh, mindset uh, and the people when I I've been to the U.S. and to Spain and it's a, it's already different in these countries. They think different about social impact and about social causes. So this is something we're trying to uh, bring uh, here as well. And about our next steps, I think uh, we are looking for new social causes, uh, but not only social causes. We, we I think we can uh, we can work on everything that helps uh, developing your city. So uh, we have this technology you can help uh, from your computers. So, but you you probably help more if the impact is um, is close to you. So if you are helping some someone in your city, uh, we feel like it's. It's more likely you help someone around you than someone in another state or in another country. Uh, it doesn't mean you, you couldn't help someone uh, in another country. Of course you can, but uh, by the data we, we have gathered so far, it looks like people tend to, to help someone close to them. So I think this is, this is our next step, to, to get more causes and to make it possible to help someone really close to you. Great. And I, and I think, thank you, Jorge. And I think that's very connected to, to, the, to the essence of volunteering, actually, and is getting, getting more in touch with our context and getting more in touch with our communities and trying to do a difference in, 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 in our communities. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I think this, this is about the time that we have for today. Um, I really would like to thank Monica and Jorge for taking the time to share with us their both their research and also the work that their company the, their company is doing. Um, it has been really interesting. Of course, this is just a tiny bit of the many things that we can learn around digital volunteering. 
Monica, is your report available online? Can people access it? It is, it is, but as I have mentioned, it is only in Portuguese, it is not in English. Okay. Um, so we will share Brazilian with you. Yes, go ahead. Yes. It... No, 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 that is for, for Portuguese speaking people in Portugal or, or in Brazil, but not in, in Spanish yet and no in English. Okay. So hopefully we'll have uh, that tool uh, soon in other languages. It is good to know that there is something already out there in, in Portuguese. Um, we will send a link for those uh, who are interested and, and would like to have a copy of, of their report. And, um, and both Monica and Jorge would be more than interested to hear if you have any other questions. Uh, on behalf of Ayave, thank you very much for being, for being with us in this webinar. Uh, and we hope to see you in our next webinar um, that is probably we're going to be around youth volunteering and disaster. We're working closely with, with a team of youth that are part uh, of our organization and that are right now in Nepal. And so we're hoping mm -hmm. to get a, a good webinar with them and some other youth that are working uh, in different parts of the world in um, disaster recovering. So we'll be letting you know more about this and, and other options in our newsletters and in our emails. So thank you very much for joining us and, and we hope to see you soon again. So, thank you. Thank you all.